So what we cover today then, um, first of all, I'm not assuming uh, a lot of knowledge about these things. So I'm going to talk about on-premises identity and even, you know, what is MIM? Uh, what is Microsoft Identity Manager? Why has that been important for on-premises identity? I'm going to talk about cloud identity and the promise and the challenges that that brings. And hybrid identity, which is really the primary interest here, which is the combination of the two. Azure AD Connect, which is really the glue between those. And the ongoing need for Microsoft Identity Manager and perhaps a little bit of where do we go next from here. So what is MIM? Well, I always like to say, as a, as a joke, it's perhaps the most renamed product in the Microsoft stable, substantially over, uh, unchanged for over a decade, except in name. Uh, fundamentally and importantly, it is a flexible and reliable on-premises sync engine for uh, on-premises identities. I say mostly on-premises identities. There's no reason why it can't connect to a web service. Uh, why it can't reach into the cloud, but it tends to be seen and is primarily an on-premises system. And that flexibility um, and also its, its performance has meant that it's really established itself in, in many, many organizations as a, as a very reliable uh, and tool, you know, tool that's utterly relied upon. Uh, but we're here to talk more about why people might even be implementing it now and, and why that would be. And we'll get to that. Now, the problem that it's dealt with is the fact that over the years, people have developed many, many silos which hold identity information, users, groups, and so on, objects with their attributes that are required by each of those systems, line of business apps, ERP systems, directories, and so on all of which need them so that they've got information about the users and the group memberships and so on to make their decisions. And what MIM does is to, doesn't solve the problem exactly, but it streamlines the use of these by synchronizing data across all of them, uh, including passwords. So importantly, uh, we get uh, the same sign-on information perhaps across all these, these different systems. And Microsoft did something rather clever with this. They made it technology agnostic, uh, that it equally connects to uh, all manner of directories. But of course, that was rather cunning because it also meant that uh, they're very much present as, as you know, the major platform. And this, is, this has all been you know, a, a great story. It has a portal and a workflow engine too, but that's not my focus here. I want to stick to it as a synchronization engine today. So the um, benefits of MIM then, if, if, we, we, if we say what it does, but you know, what does it do for us? Um, well, importantly from an administrative point of view, one identity to manage. And a, a, a key thing here is its ability to deal with HR-like systems. Many organizations have multiple of those. And when I say an HR-like system, I mean a student registration system or a contractor system or anything that holds what we might refer to as corporate users. But organizations, because of their complexity, especially large organizations or organizations that have merged with others or been bought or bought, will end up uh, having multiple of these systems. And so one of the things that MIM does is to mediate between those very well. But we, we can end up with one identity, one representation of our corporate users to manage. The user gets the benefit of same sign-on because we can synchronize uh, the, uh, their UPN or their log on, their account name, and we can also synchronize their passwords. But it has benefits for security because we've got the data we need consistent across these silos in order to take uh, security decisions um, disabling, deleting accounts, for example. And similarly, for governance, um, if, we, if we want to apply governance, we need to know reliably the identity information of those people, what department, what their job title is, what groups they're in, and so on, so we can organize their entitlements. And also, it's easier to do the next thing. You've got a great platform to start from. You don't have to just come up with an entirely new independent silo. So that's where we've been going with MIM and on-premises. So what about the cloud then? The benefits of the cloud, we almost don't have to discuss these anymore. People have got it. 
Um, I refer to it as cloudy goodness. This is the uh, flexible capacity, the ability to put, draw on additional resources when you need them. Known cost through a subscription-based approach rather than you having to worry about things breaking and having to be fixed and so on. High availability built into the cloud data being replicated to different data centers and made available from different data centers when needed. Mobility, so uh, different devices in different places wherever you happen to be, and ease of administration through consistent portals. So um, what we might say is that what you get is administrative controls and the user experience that actually you could only get to on-premises through a complex implementation like MIM. So what we get sort of out of the box with the cloud is the kind of stuff that we were getting, uh, that we, we had to do a lot of work to get to because we'd created this, the, or this, this mess of silos that needed to be dealt with. Um, security in the cloud is through, uh, and, and we're talking Azure here, comprehensive protection of identity. So all sorts of signals can be brought into play, device state, location, user behavior, and, and so on. Importantly, lists of compromised credentials and because it's the cloud and because it's all real time, we can see real time remediation, the ability to step up authentication, block access, or even install a fix. And then again, governance controls built in. So uh, Azure AD uh, has been built very much more with roles in mind and everything that goes with roles, just in time, admin access, access reviews, which I would tend to call attestation, and so on. So this is the promise of cloud services.